this video I'm going to try to explain a bit about code. So I guess first off you just want to do a uh, uh, make sure you have Unity 3D you can get Unity Personal Edition free download uh, and that will actually come with Mono Develop so that's what we're going to use so let's see just use Mono Develop so we're going to make something really basic So we're going to make a new console app in C Sharp. Let's name it Learning the Basics. Now, uh, let's let's make it simple. So. If you worked at all with uh, the Unity um, script files uh, in C Sharp, you'd notice that there's like a, a start. It says like public or just void start. And then it's got uh, two parentheses. And then inside of these uh, squiggle curly braces, uh, you would type in the, th the things that will happen when you start. Well, in a console app, uh, it was just called main. This is the main thing that gets that gets run. So this will just say hello world in the console. Let's try to get that running. So if I just hit run, uh, run without debugging. Okay, so it's a bit small because I am running on a really high resolution. Um, but it says hello world, and you press a key and it'll end it. So a few basic things to get down, and honestly, you only need to know like a very low amount of algebra to, to program. So it, it may seem intimidating, but like, uh, sure there's math for a lot of the concepts that sequential code will do, and algorithms and stuff, but even a mathematician might not even go into some of those, you know, I mean, unless they're like a doctor, PhD, something. But anyway, yeah, you don't need a lot of math. You just need to know middle school, high school algebra. Anyway, uh, so let's keep it simple with, uh, variables. So the syntax for a variable would be variable, and this could be a type, especially if you're not assigning it. So how about x? So it's easier that way. So uh, there are a few types. There's int. And integer, if you don't remember, is a uh, whole numbers, so no decimals, but it'll go positive and negative. And I won't get into like the amount of uh, like the maximum and minimum because there is a max and minimum. Computers have like a definition for everything, and it goes down to how things are addressed in memory. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive into that. So if you want decimals, there's float. Uh, double, it's like a bigger float, uh, there's character, uh, character would be like, that is a character, single quote, single character, and, 
string is a little more complicated data type, but essentially it's double quote uh, and then you can have a string of characters and then you end the quote. So like in this case, we assign hello world the string to the string variable x. And if we wanted, we could replace this with x. It should give us the same thing that we saw. So, hello world. Okay, so we have some variables. Uh, I think from here though, so you don't have to use console right line and be in a main loop uh, and not know what these are and stuff. We're just going to do it in Unity so that everything we do, we can show a quick example of it doing something to your game. So I'm going to close this learning basics. Uh, close out of Mono Develop. And I will open Unity. Oh, maybe that was the wrong Unity. There we go. Yeah, you should probably only have one installed at a time. So uh, I'm going to go to New Project. Uh, let's put that somewhere else. name it programming tutorial not sure if that'll create a new like it'll be programming tutorial new community project or there. well maybe it'll be that inside of that or, or what but all right so I'll just create it And we're not going to use any plugins. So uh, actually, I'm going to change the layout to default. All right, so this would be what you guys see in uh, on your screen. Uh, without getting too in depth on how to use Unity, I'm assuming you've played around with it. Uh, let's make script that does something. So we were just using variables. How about we uh, create a 3D text. Now uh, it looks like hello world is the first word it puts in there which is kind of ironic but that's it's typical in programming to do your first words as hello world. Uh, there's a history behind it I don't really remember too much about it, but there. So in game view, it says that. We're going to mess with this text. So new text, uh, why don't we make it actually So we got some text. I'll make it a little bigger. Uh, so we have our new text. Uh, we call that the text game object. All right. So over here in our project folder. We're going to create a C sharp script. We're going to give it a name about variable tutorial. Uh, now I have some settings that are a bit different, so I'm going to change them to mono develop. There we go. Uh, now when I open this, there, good. 
should open Mono Develop. I was using Microsoft Visual Studio, which requires a plugin, so that's why I didn't choose to do it for you guys. Alright, so what Unity generates for your C Sharp script, and hold on, I'm going to close these. Uh, oh, interesting. Close solution. Okay. Let's just open that again. <coughs> Weird. Well, I don't think it's a problem that we have these in the solution. Because Unity uh, actually does all of the compiling right when you open it. There'll be a little spinny thing on the bottom right every time you change a file. So, like, if we did that, which would be an error, by the way. Then we saved it. If we opened up in Unity, see that spinning thing for a second there? Also, it shows down here at the bottom, and when you click it, it'll go to your console. Uh, it'll tell you an error. So, this is your friend. This console window will tell you every error you have. Uh... You can double click it, and it'll bring you right to the line, hopefully. Doesn't always. So it's saying something about void update not making sense because uh, DS is there. So there's no keyword, there's no wrapper, and there's no semicolon. Uh, so how about we uh, start with what we had in the other one, which is string x equals hello world. Uh, why don't we add something to change what it is? There. Alright, now, instead of console out, we're going to want to change that, that text right there. So we have the text game object. There's a few ways you can get to it. You can get to it through code by knowing the name of the object. You can create uh, some place where you can drag it into on the object, or you can make the script for the object. So what we're going to do is make a, a managing object. Oops, let's drag it outside of that. Uh, this will be our... Game Manager, I like to make those. So, we're going to give Game Manager this script we got here. Just going to drag it on to it. You can also do it in the Inspector, because it appears here. So, Variable Tutorial is our script. And, without getting into object logic, I'm just going to say that public game object well so the in in unity it's got a big library of components you can use so this guy isn't just a game object he's got these on it so it's got a mesh render it's got a transform it's got a text mesh this is what we're looking for the text mesh so Let's do text mesh. Give it a name. Uh, so, again, semicolon. Uh, I think I didn't really explain that too well. Uh, for assigning a variable, you do data type. If you're within a block, you do data type. Uh, if you're in a class, which I'll get into later, you have to specify the access level. If you don't specify one, it's going to be private. Private meaning only this, uh, only things inside of these curly braces will be able to access it. But anyway, so data type, uh, they call it an identifier, but it's just the variable name. And then 
the value after an equals sign. So, and then semicolon tells the computer that it's going to end the line. So, anyway, so we end the line, we have a public text mesh to change. So, before we go further, I'm going to show you what adding this public thing to our mono behavior class will do. So, when we click game manager here, our variable tutorial script has a variable here. It says none text mesh. Now what we can do is we can grab this guy and drag it in and now it's assigned. So I'm just going to hit control S and save. Oh, I don't have any scenes. Alright, so this will be our test scene. Why not? Uh, now if I go back into the script, this will be assigned because we assigned it in the editor. So now text mesh to change, and then a the neat thing about object oriented stuff is these helpers down here, as I type it, it'll fill it in. So if I press enter when I'm on it, I get the object. So now text mesh, if I press the period symbol, it will show me things that are just on that object. And it's a big list, but it sometimes helps to see what it's got uh, at such short notice. So here's one thing that we get to change, which is the text, and this should change the text on the text mesh. So if we just say text.text .text equals x on start, it should change the text to this. So, and that's at runtime because it's got to start. So when you look in game or look in scene, it's not going to show any difference. What you got to do is hit play. That was pretty anticlimactic because it didn't do anything. Uh, now why didn't it do anything? So here's some debugging. Uh, text mesh on start change the text to this string okay possibly well okay so if I run it and then I click on this it shows the text as just hello world so Uh, here's a, a thing you can do. There's debugging. So if you accidentally click over here, it's fine. You, uh, you can stop it at runtime. So to, to actually do that, you stop your application. And then you go in here, and you have to have Unity open. And you go to Attach to Process. Double click on uh, Unity. Now watch when when I hit play. See that blinking down here? It has stopped at that stop point. So you can hover over things and it'll tell you stuff while it's stopped. So X is what I assigned it to right here when you hover over X. Now let's look at text mesh. Text mesh, and it'll open it up a little bit. The text is still hello world. It's bizarre. There might be a way that they're doing it. So let's see. Uh, let's get rid of that stop. So I hit stop and stop the debug. So that let this continue. So I'm just going to close it again. Or stop it from running. Uh, and see what other things we got on the text mesh class. So set no uh yeah huh. 
text. Oh, what's which text? Oh, okay, it's a flag. All right, uh, text. Oh, I see. So text is actually a. Oh, never mind. Dang. <laughs> I thought they were doing something like that. All right. What's going on here? What if I just do B? B. All right. Okay, so what I think happened there is, uh, I think I mustn't have saved something like that. Like it didn't save the file. See it over here. I wonder if I just... Yeah, it updated. Alright. Anyway. So there's a lot of things that could go wrong in anything you do in code, but it is literally what you type and give it that it's doing, which is nice about it, but it can, you can be making a bunch of fail-safe logic to, to keep the user from running into things, and then the script will get real, real big, and, you know, all right. And then it's more confusing when there's more stuff written, but... Okay, so we've got string. Now, what if we do some other kinds of logic? So how about... Let's set the string equal to nothing, which is different than null. Uh, null would be... If this... Uh, didn't equal anything at all. It was just a memory address to no value. That would be different than a memory address to a blank string. Because it actually, it has a value. The emptiness is a value. So, what I'm going to... Let's see. Let's, let's do a little bit of a conditioning. So, uh, if x... And this is a operator for equal to. This is double equals. So if it equals that, we're going to say x by saying x again is equal to, and we'll just make it something else. So by putting this if there, the command right after it is going to say, or is going to happen. Uh, and this, because of the semicolons, you can put in any order, so it, or not order, but on any line. And uh, uh, it's better practice to actually do this. So, what? Uh, what? Well, I guess they do it differently in here. I'll do it that way. Okay, so you may see curly braces here. You may see them below it. It's formatting standards. It doesn't really uh, affect what happens to the code. But uh, anyway, so this is going to equal that. So hopefully you'll say blah on the screen. Blah. Okay. So... Okay, um, so if if we want it to be not equal to that, this won't get run. This is the comparative operator for not equal to. So it shouldn't display anything. There. So now we have if with condition. 
You can also store conditions with a boolean operator. So there. So am I true? is going to have either the value tr false or the value true. So if we just put it at false, you don't even need an equals operator for a bool. You can do am I true. Now, it's false, so it won't happen. So if am I true, blah. Just show that not working, so blank. Now, if you want to, I mean, you could do this. It does the same thing. <clears throat> but it's always nice to get some shorthand so you can understand other people's code. So what if you want it to be if that's false. You could do equal to false or you could use the not symbol. So if not am I true equals true then blah. So it's false which means if false essentially do this. So it should say blah blah. Okay. So yeah, I forgot about that data type to mention it. You can, uh, uh, true and false is actually what those conditions return in an if, or uh, it's converted to true or false essentially. So what we can do is, I have this strip of code from earlier. If X is not equal to that, uh, empty quotes, then this statement is true. So uh, empty quotes is true, so this will be false. So am I true will still be false, which is part of the condition, and we should see blah. Okay, so now we've got a bit of conditioning and if statements. Let's get into the more tough stuff like looping. So I'm going to delete this. We're going to have a string. And we're going to loop it. So let's just do oh, a for loop. It's more more of that. So for loop has this kind of syntax. Syntax is uh, keywords, I guess. So it's got two semicolons. The first one happened. Uh, the first command happens right when this line is reached. The second isn't a command; it's a condition like the if. And then the third is something that it runs at the end of every uh, every iteration or every time it reaches the end of the loop or the the block right here, this uh, curly braces. So first, so right away we're going to make an int and typically it's called i and we're going to set it to something. So zero and then every every iteration going to set i equal to i plus 1. And that can be shorthand with that. So i plus plus equals, or i plus plus is to, uh, it sets i to be i plus 1 by doing that statement. Now, I less than a number, and now if if it starts at zero, 
it gets up one every time and the condition is less than 10, this should iterate from 0 to 9 because it's less than 10. So yeah, these angle brackets uh, can be used just like double equals or not equals. There's also or equal to. So that's greater than or equal to, which wouldn't do anything in this case. Less than or equal to, which would which make it go to 0 to 10, which would actually be 11 iterations. Uh, so yeah, if we loop this 10 times from 0 to 9, we can do x equals itself plus, and uh, let's just say the letter A. So after it gets to the, or so it'll get to this, and it'll do everything inside of these curly braces 10 times. So we should see 10 A's on the screen. So a better way to see this is just something you're going to see at some point, I'm sure, is uh, plus equals. That's the same thing. So plus equals, sort of like this plus plus, will be this x equals itself plus something else. So a will be added to the end. And you can also subtract from the end, you can divide from the end, you can multiply from the end. Yeah, but the stuff you can do in a calculator, the, the math functions, like plus, minus, uh, those those are all in here too. So, uh, like right here where I'm doing that, it could just as easily be that, even though that's going to give me a decimal and integers are not decimal. They have no decimal. So, yeah, I'm starting to get a little overwhelmed on how much to cover. It'll make more sense as you keep going, but... Alright, anyway. So, uh, that is a simple loop, which will go from... 0 to 10, so that's how you get it to loop that many times. There's also a while loop, which is just a condition. So in order to do the above, you would have to do this, or something similar. So before it, while i less than 10, then it's got its block, and then uh, you would do your A, but you have to make sure at the end that you actually do that. So, this would be the same as this. I'm not sure what's wrong there. Oh. Because I is existing over there. Well, let's see if Unity doesn't like it. Yep. Alright. Uh, oh, I see. So, uh, one thing to note is scope. So, X is visible within this curly braces. It's not visible from update. So inside of here, I can't reference x. So what this is saying right here is I just made a variable in start. And then right here, it's referencing a new variable called i. But there's already a variable called i. One way to get out of this is by simply doing this. Split it out out of uh, start 
Oops. No, I did that right. Yeah. So, that shouldn't give us an error, but it looks kind of ugly. So, yep. So, no issue there. Also, when we play it, it'll probably give us 20 A's. Yeah. So, we got two loops of 10. So, I'm going to make that less ugly by getting rid of those. And we're going to... We're going to do without an iterator uh, and just do an infinite loop. Now, doing an infinite loop will cause your program to crash. So you don't want to do that normally. But that is how you start an infinite loop. So why don't we do something crazy to it? So... Uh, to get an infinite loop to stop, you use that command. So that'll, that'll stop it. So this will run to here and then break out. That'll only go up one step. So like if you're in, uh, in a nested loop, break will only break out of that loop. You'll still be in this loop. It goes one level back. Oops. So, get rid of that. So while true, it's going to loop. So how about x plus equals a, let's call it b. If, now we're going to do a condition here, and if it's true, we're going to break out. So what should our condition be? How about if every iteration we're adding B to it, uh, let's grab some logic from the string and and let's say if the total length of the string is 20. So if X dot, and then we get all these crazy string commands, uh, that's what we're looking for. This is a property that you can get, but you can't set length. So this is how many characters there are. Uh, so if that is greater than or equal to 20, we'll break out. I did or equal to if for some reason something outside of this had added to it or something. Uh, like, say, if I did uh, that, and it couldn't get to equal 10, you, you wouldn't have an infinite loop, which is, you know, you want to you know that your loop is infinite, and you got to know that you're going to break out of it, just, just so you're not crashing programs. Okay, so... Uh, let's test this. So, we should see 10 A's and 10 B's. Yeah. A, A, B, B, B. Uh, I'm going to change the camera a little bit. Drag its X position over so I can see all those. Okay. Yep. That's what we wanted. Alright, so now we got loops. We got while. How about. Uh, want some, well, some, some nifty things about object oriented. And I, I'm not going to get into probably even during this video uh, what all makes up of an object. Like. We've got these properties, right? We can find them by pressing dot. You can make this entire class, this object. So there's lots of info about this stuff. I'm just I thought it'd be nice to try to teach it. So anyway, uh, how about we make a guess the number program 
And I'll just leave that in here. So let's start another file. So if we go to projects, create a C sharp script called guess the number. Yeah, let's we'll call it guess the number. All right, so our game manager, I'm gonna take off, or actually I'll leave it on, but I'll uncheck it. So variable tutorial is now unchecked. Guess the number I'm just gonna put on there. Uh, that's gonna be checked. And let's create some scene elements. So the text game object, how about let's uncheck that so we don't see it. But what I'm going to do is duplicate it. So I've got a text game object one. Let's turn that on. And we're going to call this our display text. Let's set it to a default of what it is. This will be our response to a player uh, and uh, let's duplicate that and move something over this will be um, actually I'm not going to duplicate it how about we have our display text. In the game scene, it's going to look like that. Let's pull in some of the new UI stuff just so we get a nice input. So if you go and right click and go to UI and then do an. Uh, how about a button? Alright, so now what this will do is it'll create this giant thing called uh, the canvas. And it's got a button in it. And there's an event system. So you have to have these things for it to run, but just create a UI element and it'll generate it for you. Sort of like how the main camera is always there. So our button. it up. This is actually the screen. I'm not going to get too in-depth on how UI works, so I'm just going to put it in the middle. Middle-ish. Kind of. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Uh, then if you go inside of it, it's got a text script. We're going to call this Make a Guess. That's capitalize that. Why not? Okay, so now we've got a button. Make a guess. And uh, we need an input. So click on the canvas. Go to UI. Uh, we want input field. So just put it wherever you want. Uh, it's got an enter text. I think I'm going to change that if I can. Placeholder, enter text. Let's change that to enter number. And then down here we can... Oh, I was hoping it would be a an option to force it to be a number. Well, we'll just do it in code. Okay, so enter a number. Make a guess. It's, uh, it looks like that. So you enter a number, make a guess. Uh, yeah. So we've got our input field and our button. So let's rename these. So our button is 
make a guess button and our input field is the number to guess input now our our game manager guess the number script we're going to want to put these three objects on it by three i mean the, the make a guess button the number to guess input and our display text so we can say you got it so uh let's open up guess the number now i'm going to make some global to this uh game manager the the guess the number class so without getting in too much detail basically if you uh if you make some variables out here, it can be used in all of these. I can update and start. So, uh, about our actual number. Set it to zero for now. Uh, we'll randomly say what it is. Uh, so our actual number is held in here, which we can reference in these other, in these other, uh, these are they're called methods or functions, uh, which is okay. So it's if you wanted to call a function, let's see, I'll just do it now. Okay, so if you wanted to call that, you would do my function, oops, okay, so how the syntax works for that is this will go right down to here, and when it's done, you spit right back out at the end of the line. So my function 2 sending in the number two in these parentheses so anytime I say a it's going to be two because it, when it's sent in it comes in as the number two but you, don't, you can reference it as a variable and then at the very end of this method you would have to do something like return and uh, some value after it, semicolon, and and then it would actually equal something after it's called. So like, you could do cool would then equal three once it gets to it. And you could do some similar things like if you named it uh, integer doubler. So it just take a and multiply it by two and return it back. So that would be integer doubler five. And that would give me the value of 10. So cool would equal 10. Anyway, I'm gonna comment that out. So I'll leave it in there. Comments in C, C sharp is double slash and everything after that on that line is commented. There's also this kind. And everything in between it, even on multiple lines, is commented. You don't even need these. You just need that. So, cool. I don't even know if I spelled that right. Oh. All right, so that's helpful for letting the the developer know information other than the code. So uh, I'll just delete it. All right, so that's how methods slash functions work a bit. Uh, kind of jumping around here. Uh, 
So let's make our public uh, our references to the stuff in this in the scene, like uh, display text. Oops, that's going to be a text mesh display text. Then we have our oh I forgot. Okay, so the new UI requires that you do a using statement. Using statements give you stuff to find in other files, basically. Uh, you can make your own, and these are called namespaces, by doing uh, namespace keyword. So like namespace all stuff. And everything in here could be referenced by doing pulse stuff dot or using pulse stuff at the top. So what we need is using Unity Engine and what we have in addition to that is Unity Engine has another namespace within it called UI and we're going to need that for uh, the UI elements. So make a guess button is a button. So if I type button and That'll only pop up and turn green and stuff if you have the UI using statement as a warning there. Uh, and we're, we're calling it make a button. Oops. Uh, and then we also have our uh, input field. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. Input field number to guess input. Okay. So, in our start... Oh, wait, no. We, we'll set them in, uh, in the editor. So, uh, why don't we just display stuff first? So, like, to make sure an input field exists... Um, so, okay, what I was showing earlier with the button, we're going to make that button do something. So, let's create a public method. Void just means it doesn't return anything. Remember, I had it into on that other method. Uh, anyway, I'm jumping around. So, on button pressed. Uh, about on guess button down. So this is going to hold stuff for what we do when the button is pressed. We're going to have to trigger this method from the button, but It'll run this code once you when you hit the button. So uh, just to see something happen, why don't we make our display text dot text equal to that? So you clicked me. So on guess button down. All right. So, all right, so make a guess button. Oh, I guess first off, we should have all of these filled. So, guess the number has display text, make a guess button, and number to guess input. So, display text goes in there. Guess a guess button goes in there. Input goes in there. And it's nice to save. Uh, so when we run it, display text should change to something when we click this button. Oh, no, it shouldn't. I don't have it in yet. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so to test that, go to make a guess button. Now it's got a weird new thing on the bottom here on click. 
there's other events event types you can get with the event system uh, but let's just use the one on a button so if you hit this little plus sign you can specify an object you can do that by this little circle here or you can drag it in so I'm gonna drag game manager in here now this is enabled and what I can do is click it and it'll show me the scripts on it so game object transform variable tutorial even though this is disabled it's still there so if I go to guess the number should be able to find our on guess button down when I click that that means on click it's going to run that method on that object so now when we save and load it up now it'll run that method you clicked me all right so we've got a button that runs this we've got data stored we know that display text is changing how about instead of displaying you clicked me uh, we have a, another variable let's see so int guest number there an impossible number uh, well I guess not impossible but anyway so we have start we have button down uh, we also have update but that gets into other stuff I'm just gonna comment it out for now so when you start let's see that's not right okay so display text should equal guess any number between well, let's have a minute and a max uh, see uh, I'm doing a plus here so you can add a string and this will add a, another string to the end of it so uh, zero okay that's not a good idea okay uh, I'll do some string manipulation so how about int min equals zero int max equals 100 so uh, and this will just be set over here so how about let's set it so it can't be changed constant just means it will never change it takes less memory some things require a constant value okay so between min and then if we do an object the, the period there's a method on there called to string and uh, you can just close the brackets so then we remember a space here after the quote would be and space quote max to string so it says guess any number between min and max except it'll be numbers 0 and 100 so that's our first thing our actual number we should change we should set it to something random so how about we do and unity has a nice random object you do random dot range let's give it the min and the max now we'll get a number but we're gonna have to guess for it so let's just make sure that says min and max there like 0 to 100 that over so display text oh that's right let's wait on here all right so display text should go there let's give it a middle center anchor alignment centered just to make it easier and let's change the character size to be smaller 
about bright blue. Guess any number between 0 and 100. Okay, so that's doing that. Just moving it a little bit. Because it is centered now, I just got to make it at 0. I'll just do this. 0, 0, 0. There. Okay, um... So we have a number. Uh, so when they run it, let's set the guest number. So guest number equals, and now this will only work if you have a, a number in there. So, well, let's test the condition to that. So. If, uh, let's see, our input field is called number to guess input. Uh, text. All right, so it's going to be a string. So if, let's see. There's a few ways to turn it into a number. Okay. Maybe there's a string method. Okay, string dot. Doesn't look like it. I think there was like a compare. No. Uh, convert. Maybe it's in there. So using system. There we go. Alright, so there's a convert object that's in the system using namespace. That's us up here. Uh, from converts this specific string and puts it in string. Alright. From base 64 string. Though. No, that's not what I want. Okay, convert to int 32. I think that's the one we want. The number there is the amount of uh, bits. Yeah. So convert to. Oh, okay. See, there's 19 overloads, so there's 19 different ways you can convert it. We have string, so string contains number, converts the string into an int. Okay, so we'll send it that, and then this is going to equal the resulting number. So how about, let's move that to int number equals that. All right, just to make it easier to see. All right, so now if the number is not equal to null, that should mean it's not a, like there's no a, b, CD doesn't say hi mom on it. Hopefully that'll do that. Alright, so if it's not null, 
inside of our block here. We're gonna set guest number to that. And let's have a method. We'll call it did user get it right. So how about we just do this? So if user, if that returns true, our display text will be that. Here's a little thing we could do. There's, uh, there's string commands. Slash n will be equal to a return. So this will go down a line. So let's say you got it. Down a line. Congrats. And the way we have it aligned, it'll be right below it. So you got it. Congrats. Uh, did user get it right? Um, You might want more than just true and false. Anyway, let's make that method. So, uh, does it need to be public? Let's just make it private. Alright, so, did, oh, uh, bool, did user get it right? It's got to be case sensitive. Uh, if guest number, because that's the global one, uh, is equal to our actual number. Then he did get it, so that would be uh, return true. And then at the end here, if nothing else, we're going to put some code in here, but if nothing else, it's just going to be false. Alright, so if guest number is greater than our actual number, do some logic. Oops. And then we can do an else. Oh, hey, let's do that. Alright, so that's one thing we didn't mention is there's an else. So if statements can have an else, so basically a not to the if. So uh, else if, there's an if after it, is uh, another condition. And else would be the remaining. So this is, here I'll put some comments. So equal to greater than less than. And I don't have to write it for less than because we already know if it's equal to or greater the only other thing could be less than. So uh, well, let's not return because we're only asking if they got it right. So this may seem a little weird but Let's set the display text. I'm just going to copy that. Put it here. here. Oops. We're going to say too high. Guess again. And we'll do the same thing for this one, only too low. Oops. All 
Okay. This might be all we need to do. If uh, if you get it right, it'll say you got it. If you're too high, it'll say it's too high. If it's too low, it'll say too low. Uh, let's do something fun on here. So, display text dot color. And let's do color dot. Uh, eh, red. Except it's usually error color. Okay, so let's try it out. Oh, we got some errors. Okay, system random. Oh, I see. There's a conflicting. Uh, system has its own random function or its own random object. So in this, we have to do Unity Engine dot random. Yeah, that's something that's not very self-explanatory. Sorry about that. Okay, now oh, we got an issue. Uint to int. Oh, uh, so this is an unsigned int. And we're going to have to cast it. So casting is where you take a number that, or not a number, a variable, and you force it to be a different type of variable, and you have to have the logic for some of those things when you make your object. When Once you get to making your own object, you'll have ways to handle this kind of thing, but integer from uint isn't isn't an issue, I don't think. There, it casted it. Okay, so let's try it out. All right, guess any number between 0 and 100. Let's try 1. Too low, guess again. 50. Too low, guess again. 80. Too high. 75, too high. 65, too high. 55, 53, 54. Yay! Okay. Uh, yep. So that's a functioning uh, game that uses, you know, a uh, an event system. Uh, you got user input for numbers. Um, it's got, I don't, know, I don't know if it really has loops. It's got the events, the covered loops, some of them. Uh, yeah, I covered that in over here. The source files, I can. I'll put them up. I'll, I'll put a link up for that. If this was helpful for anyone, let me know. Uh, and let me know uh, something else that you'd want to learn in, in uh, programming. So, And uh, maybe I'll make another video. It's kind of fun.